Hey guys, welcome to episode number 532. Today is Friday, so it's Fan Friday. It's the first day that it's actually felt like spring out here. So I thought I'd take you guys along for a day in the life of Greg Jones, a day in the life of my aquarium box, and uh, we'll see what kind of trouble we get into today. Uh, as you can see in the backyard here, we've got a lot of trees that came down uh, over the winter, and so that's gonna be a lot of fun to clean up. It's a big spring project, but it's not one that we're gonna tackle today. Today, we've got some stuff to drop off. We got some stuff to pick up. Uh, we got some stuff to research and uh, a bunch of stuff to clean up uh, as well. Uh, I spent my entire morning actually researching snail shells of all things because uh, we are releasing a product here shortly uh, on Amazon and I'm super excited about that. So it's, uh, it's sort of consumed the last few months but we're getting really close. Uh, to placing a very big order and uh, we'll talk more about that uh, as we go along but just one of those things you know I spent three hours this morning researching snail shells it's just weird it's bizarre every day is something different so uh, back behind me here we have what is going to be and what is planned to be a potential greenhouse location and I may actually term this a shade house instead of a greenhouse because I'm not super concerned about how much sun I'm going to get here in the yard. But I do need a location to um, keep more inventory uh, from aquascaping stone to, um, you know, aquascaping driftwood and, and other things. Uh, and potentially some fish outdoors and so I was thinking that this would make a great location for something like that uh, I haven't had time to do a whole lot of research on that yet But I'm thinking it's gonna be around 12 to 14 feet in width and then maybe up to 24 to 36 feet long and sort of take this patch of area over here which is going to be very shaded so we'll see what kind of uh, plants and fish we can raise in there but uh, it is going to be consumed with other things as well so that's a big project it'll probably take all spring and summer but I'm excited to start that as you can see the snow is almost melted and it's just started to rain so hopefully by the end of the day the rest of this will be melted and uh, I can go in and start taking my measurements and uh, see what we can do. So let's get on with our day and we'll see what we run into today. All right, so first up, we're gonna make a quick trip to uh, UPS, actually the UPS store, to drop off some boxes just to uh, make some more room in the car. So let's get going there first. All right, so I just got done in the UPS store and I just got charged $80 to return two small boxes that aren't even that heavy uh, to a vendor. It was some product that was ordered by mistake. It's the wrong size, so I had to go back. Uh, however, I learned something today. If you have bands or straps that connect multiple cardboard boxes together into a single package, uh, UPS basically charges you an additional handling fee even though the package wasn't that heavy and you don't need to pick it up by the straps or anything like that they just charge you an additional fee because uh, they're nice people so lesson learned there never gonna do that again but uh, all in all uh, the UPS packages are gone next up we're going to go to a local nursery um, for plants and that sort of stuff because I've been meaning to check out their selection of rocks and landscaping materials to see what they've got. Uh, one idea that I've had for the past few months is to uh, replace the sand in my turtle tank with small um, stone, like stream or pond stone. So I'm gonna go check that out, see if they've got anything. Yeah, so it looks like this place only has stuff by the bag. They don't have the stuff by the yard. All right, we are at the second place, and this is definitely worth taking a look at. So I got out of the car, 
so we can walk around a little bit. We're a little close to the road right now, and there's some wind, so hopefully the audio isn't too bad. But there's a lot of stuff out here, and uh, I was actually here a few weeks ago, maybe close to a month ago, but uh, it was snowing, so I wasn't able to really get any good footage. But as you can see, they've got stuff by the pallet full. This is five to 10 inch river stone on a pallet, and that's the price. So this stuff is really nice. If you had a nice new house, uh, stuff like this would be great for landscaping decoration. Obviously that stuff is way too big um, and not really what I'm looking for, but it's good to know what's around in case uh, I'm ever in the market for stuff like that. This stuff looks a little bit smaller, um, but it's not nearly as round or river round. It's, uh, it just sort of, sort of looks like a loose stone pile, so uh, I'm not too interested in that either. What we're looking for is um, primarily um, small river stone and uh, accent pieces. So this stuff is all by the pallet, so I'm never gonna buy a whole pallet of this stuff, but there is some loose stuff as well. So we'll just sort of look through all this stuff and see what they've got. These are like boulders. I mean, like one or two of these would be pretty cool in the turtle tank. Uh, even like stuff like this, um, you know, like a long piece like that might, might make a cool ramp, but uh, way too big and obviously not gonna buy all of it. So these are like uh, <clears throat> pavers or like outside your house or whatnot. These are kind of cool. Again, I'm not gonna buy a whole pallet of them. But tumbled bluestone garden pathway. Wow. They've got some nice round edges to them. It's kind of neat. All right, now we've got sort of the loose stuff. So there's a better chance of finding something that we might be able to use over here. Um, all of this stuff is uh, very square in shape and it's not really gonna work for our needs. So we're gonna pass over all this stuff. But it is nice to see the uh, variety here. And now we've got some larger stuff and some big cobble looking stuff. Again, way too big, way too square not nearly natural enough but we do have some stuff over here that may be worth looking at and this looks like edging or siding of some sort if you were to make a little garden area this is the stuff i was most interested in over in the loose section uh this is like slate basically flagstone slate so we got some green flagstone slate um, this stuff would be good like a basking platform potentially uh, slate you can sort of knock some of the edges off if you want but it's uh, got a really high chance of cracking so it may be worth picking through this stuff to find one or two good pieces but the thing that I worry about the most with slate is just sort of the sharp edges. Um, if I was to do a basking platform, especially for the turtle tank, I would prefer to do it in wood uh, instead of in stone. Although stone does hold heat really well, so there is the, uh, the upside to that. But yeah, this stuff looks loose. Um, looks pretty affordable, but lots of different colors here too. Uh, this may be something that I go back to at a later time uh, if I'm looking to do a, uh, a rock basking area, um, something like that. I, I could also put stone sort of off to the sides and then use a piece of slate like this uh, as a roof to uh, create some hiding areas. But again, I think just the, uh, the sharp edges um, and the square edges 
is just the, the thing that turns me off the most about uh, the majority of this stuff. But good to know that all this stuff is here. I think the best thing was that big river stone that we saw at the beginning. But uh, obviously I'm not buying a whole pallet of that. So this is what's out front. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll go out back. You can see all those mountains of piles and uh, we'll see what kind of uh, smaller stone they have by the yard. All right, on my way over to the yard, I uh, passed by this stuff, so I had to stop and uh, take a look at it. <laughs> Obviously, this is the uh, boulder section of the yard here, so uh, not gonna get any of this stuff, but again, we got some like really nice big um, pieces of granite and uh, they do look like they're sort of river tumbled, which is nice, but again, uh, you know, not gonna buy a whole pallet of this stuff, and unfortunately, that's sort of uh, how it comes. So, stuff like this would be good for, for making a pond, potentially, for uh, edging a pond, lining a pond. Uh, stuff like this is perfect for that, but nice stuff. Real nice stuff. It's interesting too, uh, when you see, you know, sort of the two or three predominant uh, colors that are all sort of the same, and sort of this, you know, the same rock came from the same place. Pretty cool. But that's what we got going on here. Over here, we've got the gigantic boulders and it's basically one, one stone per pallet. Uh, this stuff, this would take up the entire, this would take up the entire tank. If, if you had a very large pond and a crane, uh, you might be able to get one of these guys in or uh, put one on the side as sort of a, like a seat or a bench or something. But uh, huge, huge stuff over here. Just absolutely massive. This one is actually really cool. It like a shallow pond like six inches of water in this this up above uh, that would make a really cool stone but anyways this is the sort of stuff that's available when you go to these uh, nurseries or uh, landscaping yards so let's continue up back and see the smaller stuff because this is way too big this looks like uh, it may be a very small uh, river stone and actually, let's get out real quick so we can take a look at this. <clears throat> this stuff, when I was here earlier, was just covered in snow, so I couldn't really take a good look at it. Uh, yeah, so this looks like a very fine river stone or uh, like a pea gravel type stone. It's about that size got a slightly coarser grade to it um, maybe a little bit smaller actually than, than a pea gravel but um, the thing that I worry about with this size stone is uh, in a turtle aquarium they can ingest these uh, and get sort of impacted so usually what you want to do is either go for fine sand uh, that they can pass if they ingest it or a slightly larger stone that they wouldn't be able to um, eat by accident uh, as they're sort of hunting their food. So this stuff has nice sort of round edges to it. It might make a nice um, substrate in an aquarium. It does look like it uh, has some, some sand in it. Looks like it probably needs to be sifted and, and washed through a screen uh, at home. But uh, overall pretty nice stuff and uh, sure it's not that expensive again you buy this stuff by the yard so they come in with a giant tractor and just take a giant scoop for you so this stuff is a little bit too small for the turtles but it's got a nice color to it one other thing to be aware of with stuff like this is uh, you never really know what the stone is that's involved in a mix like this so you don't know what it's going to do to your water in terms of uh, pH or whatnot. So we'll keep going. Oh, that's interesting. We've got sort of a mix of uh, 
different uh, river cobble type material back there. I have no idea where that came from, but picking through something like that might be uh, might be cool. It just depends on the size of the project. If you got a nice little aquascape that you're trying to do or something like that, you might be able to get some small, medium, and large size stones all in the same pile. Like this stuff looks like it's probably around the right size. Um, some of these things may still be consumed uh, by accident, so I'd have to watch out for that. I may need to do an additional screen grade on stuff like this to make sure it's more of the larger pieces and I get all of the, the tiny pieces out. Again, it's very sandy stuff as you dig a little bit. The stuff on the surface is gonna look pretty good because uh, it's been exposed to the rain and whatnot, but if you want to get a sense for how dirty this stuff is, just dig into it a little bit. And uh, so this stuff is definitely going to need to be washed before it's used. But yeah, I mean, just looking at this stuff, we've got quite a variety of uh, colors and materials, which um, on one hand would look cool because it would give a lot of different variation in color in the bottom of a stock tank. Uh, but on the other hand, some of these things you may not want uh, in your aquarium. Like anything that's rusting, I probably wouldn't really want. So we'll see, but this stuff is probably the most promising stuff that I've seen so far. Uh, actually, if you go to a place like this on a rainy day, you'll see all of the color and how it will appear uh, in your water a lot better. So this stuff looks pretty uh, just tan, but there is quite a bit of color to it. It's just a matter of seeing it when it's wet. This is the same stuff. It's round creek stone. This stuff is a little bit bigger. And uh, this actually gives you a good sense for I think for the color. So this stuff would definitely be large enough, but this actually is the first size where a lot of detritus I think would get caught uh, in between the stones. So this stuff may actually be too big for the bottom of a turtle tank. Might do okay on the bottom of a pond, but you can see the uh, variation in color I think unfortunately the the area that all this stuff comes from just has a lot of that sort of like deep brown and like rust color stone which uh, isn't super appealing but it all depends on what you're looking for I'm sort of looking for a, a lighter colored mix so that I can see the fish uh, a little bit more clearly instead of just seeing a bunch of uh, drab looking stone. But this stuff is the last pile we have to look at at this place. And it is a little bit bigger. And this stuff again is uh, way too big. And we get, we'd get plenty of uh, food and whatnot caught in between these stones. And speaking of greenhouses, here's one. And I never miss the opportunity to take a closer look at what someone else has done because I feel you can always learn something from what other people have done. And this greenhouse looks like it's been here for quite a while. And it stood the test of time. It's just, uh, looks like it's outgrown its usefulness and uh, there's no plastic over it. Doesn't look like it's been used in a long time. All right, we are back at home. Taking Polly out for a little bit. Let her go to the bathroom. We're actually gonna take her to the vet in a little while. Um, but we got two boxes, two big boxes this size in of our giant chain fruit or teddy bear choya wood. This stuff is absolutely massive. It's uh, between three and four inches wide. Uh, a lot of it has a nice hollow in the middle and it's got a lot of character to it. Just amazing character to it. 
So uh, this is the normal size stuff. Uh, I was able to pull out some jumbo size stuff. If this stuff wasn't big enough to begin with, these are like the size of my arm or even the size of my leg. Just absolutely massive. This stuff is like five or six inches wide. Um, and if you guys didn't know, Choya wood is the dried out skeleton of cactus and um, essentially what happens after the cactus dies, this is what's left and uh, instead of just falling down and rotting, it gets cut up and then it's used in aquariums. It makes a great shrimp habitat. Um, the surface of the Choya wood will have a biofilm on it and the shrimp will just pick at that all day long. It also makes a good uh, pleco habitat. The plecos will chew on it and uh, live inside it. And for smaller uh, plecos and fry and everything else, it makes a good uh, hiding place for them. So just some absolutely massive pieces here that I picked out, which are pretty cool to see. So some great stuff. Um, this is some of my favorite stuff. This stuff is available on shop myaquariumbox.com so go check that out if you are interested in taking a closer look at this stuff but man just the character on some of these pieces is absolutely insane I love it it's so much better than the the regular run-of-the-mill choya wood and uh, it's a lot harder harder to get too so that's what came in the mail today I'm gonna cart this second box inside now that I've opened it up and we'll continue on with our day all right we are hanging out outside for a few minutes before we go to the vet um, I've got Polly dog here with some dog treats she likes those she actually doesn't mind the vet either so that's where we're off to next but uh, in a few minutes uh, Jay Wilson is gonna have a live stream so I might watch that either on the way to the vet or at the vet or when I get back, something like that. But it looks like he's doing a little Aquascape live stream, which is nice to see. Uh, I know last week, I believe he did a lemons for leukemia video. I was actually challenged by Peck Tech, Sean Peck, uh, a few weeks back to do a lemons for leukemia video. And so I thought I'd do that out here. Give him the dog the dog treats. I've got the lemon as a treat to eat. Um, if you guys haven't heard of lemons for leukemia, it's sort of like the ice bucket challenge, but for leukemia, uh, which is always a good cause. And leukemia itself is basically like a, a form of blood cancer, and uh, it actually appears a lot in children. Um, and it's, it's really sad, and uh, it's something that everyone can help with by joining the bone marrow registry. Uh, so I think that website is bethematch.org. So you can go check that out, or you can just search the hashtag lemons for leukemia. It's all over the place. Anyways, the challenge is to bite into a lemon and uh, film the reaction. So I'll eat the lemon. We'll see if Polly wants some too. You want the lemon? All right, let's do it. Mmm, that's a little tart. I actually don't mind lemons, so it's not that big of a deal. But leukemia is something that can be helped um, with a bone marrow transplant. So go to uh, bethematch.org and um, read a little bit about uh, becoming a bone marrow donor. Uh, I actually didn't know that there's two ways to help out. There's sort of like a, a blood method and then there's a bone marrow method. And I know a lot of people are scared of uh, the, the whole bone marrow donation thing because it does require sort of a surgery in order to, uh, to do that, to extract bone marrow, but it can help save someone's life. Oh, uh, I wish I had like a little sugar or maybe some ice water, make a lemonade. Uh, 
I think um, Aaron's Aquarium, um, Michael Aaron's, over in the UK, is doing a Friday night live stream tonight. Um, and I think last week he actually talked about lemons for leukemia a little bit. He might actually be eating a lemon tonight on camera, so go check that out. Uh, I believe he has challenged everyone to do the lemons for leukemia challenge. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't think nominating one or two people is enough to spread this message. So, everyone that's watching, go get yourself a lemon. It's springtime. We like lemons, right? Go get yourself a lemon. Eat it on camera. Hashtag lemons for leukemia. Polly, do you want any lemon? You want some lemon? No. She, I think she's the smart one. But do what you can. Even if you learn a little bit more about leukemia in the process, how you can help in any way, um, it all it all helps uh, in the end. And uh, Mike, Mike's uh, father-in-law, I believe, had leukemia uh, as a child. So uh, just goes to show you that um, you know, the more good we can do in this world, uh, the more it helps everyone out. So, let's go to the vets. You ready, Polly? You ready? Is this better than a lemon? Let's go. Polly, how was the vet? Did you have fun? Did they give you a shot? Did they hurt? No comment. All right, we're back from the vet and we got a number of packages in today while I was gone. Um, the most exciting, I think, is this right here. This is a brand new product from Zoomed. It's actually going in some of the My Aquarium boxes this month. So sneak peek for you all that are watching this video. Essentially what it is, is a bobber uh, up top and then a stainless steel clip down below and an adjustable length of basically fishing line in between. And what you're able to do is stretch out your veggies or your plants uh, or your lettuces or whatever and allow uh, part of that to sink attached to the clip and then the other part of it uh, is floating up towards the bobber so it really allows you to, um, to feed your fish some fresh vegetables uh, in sort of a, a different way uh, this will sort of float around the tank with the bobber instead of attached to your glass um, so you know all of your fish can get a chance to sort of get at it and a uh, very simple little invention uh, from Zoomed. I don't know if they have this patented. I think it actually is sort of one of those DIY things that has now come to market. So cool little idea um, and I believe these are going in uh, the freshwater cichlid and saltwater boxes this month. So to keep an eye out for those. All right and we're not done yet. Uh, we got a couple more trips to make today before the day is over. Um, first, we have to drive to Hagen. Uh, Rolf Hagen has its U.S. headquarters uh, within driving distance, which is very fortunate for us uh, in my aquarium box because it means I can drive down, pick our stuff up, and drive back uh, in the same day instead of waiting for a cargo shipment uh, delivery. So we got a bunch of stuff to go pick up there. Uh, they do not allow filming indoors unless you have prior written consent, I believe. So I will not be doing any filming inside, but I can show you what the outside of the building looks like. It is a big, big place. It's their U.S. headquarters. I believe their world headquarters is in Canada, but the U.S. headquarters is right here nearby. So um, awesome opportunity to uh, go grab some stuff from them and uh, then we'll drive it over to Mike's house. All right, we are here at the Hagen North American headquarters. 
course, this is the back side of the building where everyone goes to load up. Not the front side of the building where all the fancy people go in, but this building is massive. And if you're interested, let me know. Maybe I can come back and do a tour through this facility. But for today, we're picking up all our stuff. We gotta wait for that little truck to leave so we can back in and then we will pick up um, the stuff for this month's My Aquarium Box. Now Hagen, if you guys didn't know, uh, owns a bunch of companies, one of which is Fluval, uh, another is Marina, another is Nutrafin. So they got a lot of stuff going on here. As you can see, they've got a lot of loading bays. There's a lot of cargo that moves through this facility. Anything that is distributed in the US from Hagen comes through this building. So uh, big, big place, lots of goodies inside. Basically fish stuff stacked all the way up to the ceiling. So we're gonna go inside, gonna pick up our stuff and we will continue on with our day. I've got the car completely loaded. Uh, it took a little bit longer at Hagen than I thought this time. I guess it's uh, springtime. Uh, everyone's working on their koi ponds. They do own Laguna, so uh, they have quite a bit of pond stuff. It's also the end of the month, so I guess they're really busy. But anyways, I'm home. The car is completely packed, and we're gonna go take a trip to Mike's house. Mike Mass Aquariums. I gotta drop all this stuff off. I probably got two more trips like this in the next couple days to drop off as well. Uh, I also have some things that I'm gonna drop off to Mike. The first is a sample of a CO2 diffuser head. Got one of these, wanna test it out, see if it's any good before we feature something like that. Uh, in a My Aquarium box, haven't done a whole lot of CO2 stuff in the planted box, but uh, maybe more of that stuff is on the way. And then the other thing that I need to give him is his San Francisco Bay brand Sally t-shirt, custom made um, from San Francisco Bay. So I've got I've got one as well. I still need to pull that out. I, it's in a box somewhere, but I'm gonna drop his off and we're on our way. All right, we're at Mike's house and it's still light out, which is amazing. This hasn't happened in months and months. It's been too dark the winter. First thing downstairs is all these UPS or USPS bags. If you've never smelled these things, it smells like the depths of the post office. It's pretty nasty, but this is what we use to pack all of our boxes. So got to get them downstairs and the rest of the stuff from the car is up next. You know, your dog is uh, eating all your flowers. What? Huckleberry, can you sit? Can you sit? Let's lay down. It's a, it's, shit. it's a special shirt, Mike. Yeah, I'll put it with my special hat. <laughs> I got this too. Is this a CO2 diffuser? Yeah. What is this? It's a CO2 diffuser. I like this. Can I try it out? Yes, I am gonna try it out. Try it out. Let me let me know what you think. If it's any good, maybe we'll put it in my aquarium box. I'm gonna try it out tonight. I'm almost <laughs> giving up on walking that. Yeah? It sucks. 
I haven't watched the last episode. Last episode's okay. I think I'm about done with the show too, though. Well, that is another day done for me. Um, it's been a long day. In fact, they're all pretty long days, but when you're doing what you love, uh, it doesn't feel like work. It feels uh, great every single day to do the things that you're doing. So uh, I'm super excited to be doing the things that I'm doing. Hopefully you guys are working towards stuff that makes uh, you happy. And uh, anything you guys can do to support uh, my YouTube channel or my aquarium box is greatly appreciated because uh, this hobby is built on the backs of small businesses and uh, oftentimes it's a lot more work than it's worth and the people that are supporting this hobby um, don't get paid nearly um, an amount that's equal to the amount of work that they put in but uh, it it's all about the love of fish keeping at the end of the day so it's been a long one, but now it's time for uh, a nice weekend, and uh, hopefully we can get some my aquarium boxes packed up here uh, pretty soon. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this style of video, let me know. Uh, there's always new and interesting stuff going on. Um, I can certainly shoot more of these videos. It is quite a bit of work to sort of shoot it all and edit it together, but if it's interesting, if it's entertaining, uh, if you guys like it, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.